Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. Mishnupad Parmahansa Parikaracharya Stora Shat Shri Shimati Bhakti Vedan Swami Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Om Mishnupad Parmahansa Parikaracharya Stora Shat Shri Shimati Bhakti Siddhan Go Swami Maharaj Ki Ananda Koti Vaishnavrind Ki Nama Acharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Se Bolo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Oshadi Gora Bhakta Vrind Ki All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shishi Guru and Gauranga. So we are reading from <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 13, Text 43. Narayanam Namaskrityam. Naram Chayva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraye Before reciting the Shumat Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one shall offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God and Narayan, <coughs> unto Narayan and Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning and on to Shilavyasdev, the author. Nast Prayesu Abhadresu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavate Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtaki By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and love and service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Evam ete su bude su Chiram dayatva sa atma bu Satya ke katara niti Gyantum nesta katanchana Evam ete su bede su Chiram dayatva sa atma bu Satya ke katare niti Gyantum nesta katanchana Evam ete su bede su 
चिराम दयात्वा च आत्मबू सत्य के कतारा नीति ज्ञान तुम ने स्तकतंचना प्लीज रिसाइट तुम ने कथम चना माता जी एवं इन दिस वे ते सुबु ते सु बिटवीन दिस बॉयस who are existing separately chiram for a long time dayatwa after thinking saha he atma bu lord brahma satya real ke who katare who na are not iti das gyantum to understand na not iste was able katanchana in any way at all translation purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vidhan swami shila prabhupad ki thus lord brahma thinking and thinking for a long time try to distinguish between those two sets of boys who were each separately existing he tried to understand who was real and who was not real but he couldn't understand at all please repeat thus lord brahma thinking and thinking for a long time tried to distinguish between these two sets of boys who were each separately existing he tried to understand who was real and who was not real but he couldn't understand at all brahma was puzzled the original boys and calves are still sleeping as i have kept them he thought but another set is here playing with krishna 
how is this how has this happened Brahma could not grasp what was happening which boys were real and which were not real Brahma was unable to come to any definite conclusion he pondered the matter for a long while how can there be two sets of calves and boys at the same time have the boys and calves here been created by Krishna or has Krishna created the ones lying asleep or are both merely creations of Krishna Brahma thought about the subject in many different ways after I go to the cave and see that the boys and calves are still there does Krishna go take them away and put them here so that I come here and see them and does Krishna then take them from here and put them there Brahma could not figure out how there could be two sets of calves and cowherd boys exactly alike although thinking and thinking he could not understand at all Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastatada Sitarine Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshul Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Nama Before I start speaking today I would like to seek the blessings of Maharaj who is my mentor and of all and all the senior Vaishnavas present to be able to speak on this subject of Krishna consciousness for the benefit of myself and all of us practicing in the footsteps of Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> I feel very unqualified to speak but because Archita Prabhu told me to speak and he is um, an authority I accepted and surrendered and uh, will try to speak on this uh, Brahma Vimohan Lila which we have been speaking about for the last uh, at least 43 days or more and um, before I start I would like to state something very important which I found in the purpose of Srila Prabhupada where Srila Prabhupada says that Lord Chaitanya appreciated by Rupa Goswami as we know we are Rupa Nugas we follow in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami so Lord Chaitanya is appreciated by Rupa Goswami as the most magnificent man of charity because he because love of Krishna which is very difficult to achieve was distributed freely by him so this is very important because we do come under the Brahma Gaudiya Sampradaya and Lord Chaitanya is the most magnificent why is he very magnificent is because he's distributing the love of Krishna to us freely and Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada is even more merciful because Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada is brought this knowledge from the confinements of India to all of us so it is through the Senapati that uh, we are able today to sit and glorify these wonderful pastimes so we should really be very appreciative of Srila Prabhupada and the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and based on that I will humbly start speaking on this subject so as we know uh, there is this is the Brahma Vimohan Lila in the chapter summary there are four things that uh, this chapter covers first is that demigods also get bewildered and uh, I know that there have been questions raised in the past that how can demigods be bewildered but in the Srimad Bhagavatam chapter 1 text 1 canto 1 it says Tena Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaye Muyati Yat Suraya that the Lord imparted this Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahma the original living being the first Pur Jiva by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion and even in the Bhagavad Gita the Lord has stated this several times that even the demigods are bewildered so that is one of the mercies of the lords to his devotees that's the other thing about this chapter is that by this pastime the Lord is bestowing his mercy upon his devotees because Lord Brahma is also a devotee of the Lord and by this process it gives us an opportunity to be able to understand our positions in devotional service 
And obviously, as we know, it was also a lila that was created by the Lord to fulfill the wishes of the elderly cowherd gopis because they desired to have the Lord as their own, as their own child. So that was another purpose of this Vimohan lila. And Srila Prabhupada also clearly mentions that the other reason that Lord Brahma was in bewilderment is because Lord Brahma is born materially Abo Janma Jani. Abo Janma Jani. Born of Ambo, Amboja, which is a lotus flower. And because he was born from a lotus flower, uh, Abo Janma Janmi, we know that we can be obviously under the three modes of material nature. I'm not saying that Lord Brahma is under that, but we are always under the three modes of material nature. And we have the four defects of being illusioned, propensity to cheat, we are imperfect, and we commit mistakes. So with that, I will start speaking on what is the importance of devotional life and why our knowledge and education and degrees cannot help us in understanding Krishna. Because as you can see, Lord Brahma, initially when he sang the prayers of Brahma Samhita, he submitted to meditation. He submitted to something different. Here, he is trying to speculate what is going on. Is it that Krishna is taking away the calves and boys that are in the cave and bringing them in my presence? Or is it that the ones that are sleeping are not the real ones? These are the real ones? You see, or are these the real ones and the ones that are sleeping? This is why we cannot speculate on Lord Krishna. Because that process of speculation is futile. So this is a very important taking of this chapter that we should understand. That if the topmost jiva, Lord Brahma, cannot figure out what is our position. Our position is nothing. So we should, instead of trying to figure out why is Lord Brahma in bewilderment, we should think why are we in bewilderment. That's the first thing. Why are we bewildered? This is something that we should gain from this chapter. So, Srila Prabhupada says that by the mercy of the Guru, very difficult and confidential matters can be easily understood. And that's why we say, Guru Krishna Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. That by the mercy of a Guru, the devotional creeper in us is actually uh, blossom, uh, blossomed. Because very difficult and confidential matters become easier to understand because we accept them as it is. That's why Bhagavad Gita is as it is. Prabhupada said as it is. Because as we know, the Acharyas are presenting the, the knowledge as it is coming from the Parampara. They are just basically like postmen. And when I was trying to prepare for this class, I only read three shlokas of Srila Prabhupada. But in three shlokas, there was so much subject matter in his purpose, that instead of me trying to look for something to speak on, I was trying to see what I cannot speak on. Because Srila Prabhupada was going so deep just on three shlokas. So when we think that Srila Prabhupada has not given us this knowledge in the books, we are not reading Srila Prabhupada's books. We are not really reading his purpose. Because if you read his purpose, you will find that just in three purpose, there is so much information that you cannot even give a class by 8.15. So... This is, this is why we really need to read Srila Prabhupada's books. Srila Prabhupada says that mental speculations and dry arguments cannot help lead to the right path. Nor by independent study of books of knowledge can one progress in spiritual life. And that is what we can see from this particular purport and translation that Lord Brahma is thinking and thinking for a long time. He is thinking and thinking for a long time. And that is Brahma. So when we try to say, hey, by my education, by my degree, by virtue of my knowledge, I am going to learn something about the Absolute. You cannot learn something about the Absolute. The Lord is not something that you can go and put on a weight scale and say, weighs this much pounds. 
or go and stand next to a scale and say is this much height the Lord is inconceivable so how can we try and understand the Lord with our mundane senses something that is inconceivable so how do we do that Shashila Prabhupada gives us the formula Shashila Prabhupada says satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life so Srila Prabhupada is stating in his purpose that the satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. And we know that in the Chaitanya Charitamrat, uh, Lord Chaitanya says, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Kai, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hai. The verdict of all scriptures is that by even a moment's association with a pure devotee, one can attain all success. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. And obviously there's a lot of Srila Prabhupada disciples here. They know that just a moment's association with a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada can vanquish all our conditionings and contaminations and, and take, take us to the path of spiritual life. That's why Srila Prabhupada says satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. So very key. Then Srila Prabhupada continues to say inquiries and submissions constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. One passes the test of the spiritual master, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. What is to pass the test of the spiritual master? We are going to have a very big initiation tomorrow. You know, I have seen a lot of devotees, they are very enthusiastic towards the path of accepting a spiritual master or at least accepting initiation. But immediately they accept initiation, oh, I have reached there the enthusiasm starts waning. Yet, yet initiation is the beginning process of our spiritual life. So, by serving a spiritual master, obviously the third generation we are serving our disciples of Srila Prabhupada who are actually trying to serve Srila Prabhupada through their <coughs> natural propensities on whatever they are inclined and trying to spread that message. We are only helping in that. But it is very important that when a disciple <coughs> passes the test of the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada says that we are automatically blessed with the genuine spiritual understanding. Genuine spiritual understanding. So again, we know we have the ascending and descending process of, of knowledge. We are not trying to follow like what Lord Brahma was trying to do. He was trying to go through the ascending process, which is very, very difficult. Because we are trying to speculate, we are trying to figure out, oh, why is it like this? Why is it like this? In one, in one part, it says Lord Krishna is doing this, but at the same time, because the Lord is omnipotent, omniscient. The Lord is capable of doing these things. But we are trying to understand the Lord with our limited vision. We are not even doing peripheral vision. We are just trying to limit. Oh, but I can't do this. So how can someone else do that? You know, sometimes we, we gauge things with our own knowledge of things. Based on our own facts. Oh, if this is the way things are done. And that's why scientists and philosophers can never understand the, spirit, uh, uh, the spiritual intricacies of devotional service. Yet very simple cowherd men and women attain the highest platform of devotional life. That's why we take the dust of the devotees from Vrajabhumi. Why? Because they are not educated, but they have intense love, devotion. And that was the reason for them that whenever Krishna was killing a demon, because Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Maya had so much intense love, Srila Prabhupada says, there was so much intense love that for them that was that was all they could look at when they looked at Krishna they never looked at Krishna as, as, as awe and, and, and veneration like us because they have that intense love 
How do we develop that intense love? Shila Prabhupada says, by, by doing what? By surrendering onto a guru, accepting the instructions of a guru. A bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind towards the disciple. Practically seen in the example of Srila Prabhupada. Is very kind. Therefore, when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service, the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect. Now, as we know, Lord Krishna very clearly also has said this in Bhagavad Gita and there is no secret about it. The Lord says, Bhaktiya maam abhijanati yavanyas chasmi tatvata tato maam tatvato gyatva visate tat anantaram One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. So, that is why, as I mentioned, that simple coward men, because of their, Prabhupada says, intense affection, love for Krishna, unflinging faith, you can even call it unflinging faith, they Accept the Lord. But people with degrees and scholarly education cannot. Because they are trying to speculate, the others are accepting with love. That's the missing that's the missing ingredient. That is what is making people try to understand God by their own limited senses. I pulled up the definition of faith in the dictionary. And it says a strong belief in God based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Scientists try to look for proof. But faith is something that is based on spiritual apprehension. Unflinching faith in something. So, it is based on what? Spiritual apprehension. Spiritual apprehension. The meaning of apprehension. Spiritual apprehension means in to some degree when you are engaged in the service of and you accept it as it comes and that's why the knowledge is imparted to us through a bona fide disciplic succession and further Lord Krishna says uh, after Bhaktiya Mama Bijanati there is another very important shloka in the Bhagavad Gita Bhaktiya Tu Ananyaya Sakya Aham Evam Vidu Arjuna Gyantum drastum cha tatvena pravestum cha parantapa. My dear Arjun, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am, standing before you, and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So it is reiterated in Bhagavad Gita many times by Lord Krishna Himself. And as I mentioned earlier, that Srila Prabhupada says that um, pure devotional service, a devotee can understand the transcendental qualities and opulences of the Supreme Lord in truth. It is only through devotional service. And this starts with the process of Sharvanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, the nine processes. So the first process of Sharvanam, Srila Prabhupada says that by hearing by hearing, Shravanam, the Brahma Bhutta stage develops and material contamination, greediness and lust for sense enjoyment disappear. So the Brahma Bhutta stage starts from hearing. Now, this is very key because if you look at the shloka that is Canto 4, chapter 20, sorry, um, uh, Canto 4, chapter 30, text 20. This is what Srila Prabhupada is saying about bewilderment. 
नव्यवादृदयजनो ब्रह्म तद्ब्रह्मवादी ना मुयती ना सोचती ना हृष्यती यथो गता ट्रांसलेशन always engaging in the activities of devotional service devotees feel ever increasingly fresh and new in all their activities fresh and new they all know what the super soul within the heart of the devotee makes everything increasingly fresh this is known as the brahman position by the advocates of the absolute truth in such a liberated stage brahma bhuta one is never bewildered nor does one lament or become unnecessarily jubilant this is due to the brahma putta situation so one doesn't get bewildered and shila prabhupan mentions that this is achieved by the first process of shravanam and as lust and desires disappear from the heart of a devotee he becomes more attached to the service of the lord and by such attachment he becomes free from material contamination so you can see how scientifically shila prabhupad is presenting all these facts from one stage you come to the next stage you come to the next stage so it's not a jump in process you know we 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 are going through one process after another and then shila prabhupad is saying very clearly that it is uh, as lust and desires disappear from the heart of a devotee he becomes more attached to the service of the lord so service is then spoken about and we know that we have two types of gurus shiksha gurus and diksha gurus in iskon we spend a very limited time with our diksha gurus maybe once in a year maybe three days four days in my case maybe three or four days in a year so we are associating more with our shiksha gurus and service culture is something that you have to do because service is not static it is dynamic service never ends in the in the material world and it never ends in the spiritual world it continues in the spiritual world prabhupada is engaging us here and then obviously will engage us in the spiritual world so that service never is static that service is dynamic means the service attitude has to continue either you can stop that and start serving your senses or you can continue serving the senses of the supreme personality of god through the medium of devotional service so temple authorities when they are engaging us they are engaging us in the service of the lord it is for our own benefit this is the way we as devotees should look at things because they are actually our shiksha gurus they are not telling us like swavas prabhu never tells that please come and do something for me please do something for prabhu pad do something for lord krishna if you are not doing proper pujari service why are you not doing that because we are serving the supreme personality of god and that service attitude is the continuation of our constitutional position our con- constitutional pos- position is jiva swarup hai krishna nityadas so that attitude has to be developed and that attitude has to be continued and to continue that attitude we have to surrender and that is what our spiritual masters are asking us and that is what shila prabhupada did he surrendered to the will of his spiritual master he was only given one instruction but he took that instruction to heart we are given several instructions we don't even follow one and yet we want to progress and try to understand the brahma vimohan lilas and all these lilas when we don't follow instruction if we are not surrendering how are we going to understand these intricate pastimes that shila prabhupada is explaining that this is the clear process that you need to do first you need to satisfy the guru the pure devotee of the lord so um, again in bhagavad gita chapter 10 text 10 lord krishna says tesham satata yuktanam bajatam priti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yam mam ubayanti te to those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love i give the understanding by which they come to me again reiterating devotional service devotional service and towards that uh, i 
I would like to state on this Brahma Bhuta Prasan, uh, sorry, the, not Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, but on the shloka in the in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Navyad uh, Dridaya Yajinjino, Prabhupada has written so explicitly on this purport. It's actually like a, almost a one and a half, two pay, uh, sorry, a, a pretty long purport. And Prabhupada says, devotees inspired by the super soul within the heart to advance in devotional service in a variety of ways. And that's why we know that the Paramatma feature in our heart is actually our, our well-wisher. Because devotees inspired by the super soul. And what does Srila Prabhupada say? Very important. I know Rabindranath Prabhu had asked me this question. So Rabindranath Prabhu, here is the answer. As chanting is increased, it will, it will become new and fresh. So the core activity is chanting. Because chanting increases and as it increases it makes new and fresh and Srila Prabhupada says that Rupa Goswami states that if he could somehow get millions of ears and tongues then he could rally spiritual bliss by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra so as our chanting increases it becomes fresh and new it doesn't become stale now so the enthusiasm, the energy, as we know, that the Lord in Kali Yuga also takes the form through the holy name. He incarnates in the holy name. And that's why Nam Nam Akari Bhauja Nija Sarva Saktis, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, in the Nam is all the energies. But the Lord is also potent as a manifestation of His Nam in the age of Kali. And that's why when we chant Hare Krishna, we don't get tired. But if you chanted something else, you will actually get bored and tired. If not... Uh, going to a psychiatric doctor because he'll say what's going on with this dude you know he's always chanting water 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 or coca-cola but when you're chanting the name of Krishna they actually the psychiatrist is bewildered why is this person in bliss so further Srila Prabhupada says there is nothing uninspiring for a highly advanced de devotee because of the process of chanting is so potent that there is nothing uninspiring for a highly advanced devotee. And, as, and then Srila Prabhupada mentions in the same purpose that Srila Jeev Goswami states that the Lord as the super soul within the heart of the devotee rewards him, him reward, reveals himself as ever increasingly new. So through the process of chanting which makes you feel that mood of freshness and, and, and have that new feeling Srila Jeev Goswami says the Lord reveals himself as ever increasingly new. Being inspired by him, that is the Lord, as the Paramatma feature, the devotee experiences increased transcendental bliss in the execution of his devotional service. In fact, I, I was listening to a lecture of Srila Prabhupada as I was driving uh, from Orlando to, to Tallahassee. And Srila Prabhupada mentions that when a test of, of our devotional service is when we are engaged in the service of the Lord and we are enjoying it more and more, that is a sign of our advancement. But immediately we think that we are tired, then we are going towards the direction of material life. Because devotional life means, means giving you freshness, means giving you enthusiasm. So if we say, oh, I'm tired, 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 means something is going wrong. Go back to the basics, chant properly. Read Srila Prabhupada's books. Shavanam. Associate like Devamit Maharaj said with enthusiastic devotees. Because Srila Prabhupada is in his books. Vapu and Vani. Through the, the process of reading his books, we become stronger. And Srila Prabhupada then continues to mention that for one who does not take personal training under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, it is impossible to even begin to understand Krishna. Period. This is Srila Prabhupada speaking. I am, I am just a messenger. I am just presenting what Srila Prabhupada is saying in his books. Very clearly, if one does not personal, take personal training under the guidance of a bona spiritual master, it is impossible even to begin, he says, even to begin to understand Krishna. So Brahma Vimohan Lila is beyond us. 
please do not try to understand why he was bewildered and try to understand why we are not in that stage <coughs> of devotional service that we can start appreciating this much more and Srila Prabhupada says that the word to is specifically used here to indicate that no other process can be used can be recommended or can be successful in understanding Krishna just imagine Prabhupada's words and the lines of thought that Srila Prabhupada is going when he is actually speaking to us through his books he says very clearly that nothing else can be recommended or can be successful in understanding Krishna apart from making sure that devotional service is being carried under the orders of a bona fide spiritual master who is being represented through an authority in fact we are very lucky here that we have an authority like Swavas Prabhu because I have never seen Swavas Prabhu ever come to you angry he always smiles he always smiles to you he always ha ah, speaks to you in a very in a very affectionate manner you need to go to uh, to the other side which is the east coast and meet someone in new york who many devotees will be seen today for ratyatra i don't want to give any names or anything but then you will know how uh, there is you no know, in, in management two ways of respecting someone out of fear and out of respect so the mood here in bible is of respect because we have been trying to be engaged in the service of the lord and it is essential for us to develop that mood it is essential for us to concentrate on our chanting it is essential for us to surrender that's why the ultimate instruction of the Gita is Sarva Dharma Parityajya Maam Ekam Saranama abandon everything and surrender unto me Hare Krishna any questions any comments any further elaboration suggestions Ananda Murari Prabhu Thank you for the nice class. Um, you mentioned many times that if we just serve the spiritual master, then uh, the knowledge becomes revealed to us and we gain proper understanding. And then also in the first canto it says that by devotional service alone we gain causeless detachment and knowledge. But then you were also explaining how it's very important to read Srila Prabhupada's books. But it, it almost seems like just by doing devotional service, you gain that knowledge within the heart. So can you elaborate on that? Yes. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, obviously by the process of devotional service. But it, even in the Gita, the Lord says that we need, and I will let uh, senior devotees like Archita, Sovas, or Maharaj elaborate on it more. It is only to consolidate our faith stronger. Because we are always in the if and but mood. We are so conditioned that for us to accept something unconditionally, that's why, the, that's why I remember what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, that you will be my Lord unconditionally. Are we always unconditionally ready to accept everything? That is why we need to read Srila Prabhupada's books because through the Vani, through the words of Srila Prabhupada, you are a book distributor. You're going out and facing the masses. You're distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. When you have that firm conviction, that knowledge that Srila Prabhupada is giving in the books, it only helps you further in being more enthusiastic. That's the word I will use. Enthusiastic in spreading that mission. Because we ourselves have to be also watering our Bhakti Lata Bij through the process of chanting and through the process of hearing. Shravanam. And you hear what? Krishna Lila. And when you're hearing Krishna Lila, you're hearing Srila Prabhupada's words. If that makes sense. So, Shravanam Kirtanam. So, you have to, we have to continue. It's like a doctor. He's treating so many patients and then he becomes sick himself. Now, how is he going to treat a patient? He himself is sick. So, we have to also keep our spiritual life very strong. And that's why, you know, we have the three processes of Sambandha, Abhidya and Prayajana. Anyone else, Maharaj, has to say something more? Uh, uh, yes, Archita Prabhu may add something. Yes. 
Jai. Thank you for a nice class, Prabhu. A lot of really good points. I was just appreciating your point about, uh, you know, so-called intelligent or people with degrees on like the mental, like impossible to understand by mental speculation. And I was uh, thinking how, you know, very often we feel the need to like quote scientists or like try to find evidence in the scientific conclusion to like back up Krishna consciousness or like want to uh, argue on scientific semi-conclusive truths. But uh, um, what we, what I feel that I need to realize is that, you know, they're simply just puffed up with their degrees and they're in a compromised position because they're accepting money from a system. If they disagree with what is there, they'll be cast out. So uh, on, on the opposite side, Narada Muni Vyasadev, they're simply after the truth. To understand the truth is, means to understand Krishna. They're synonymous. So not to, that I shouldn't be bewildered by the jewel on their head, you know, like the, the, the jewel on the head, not be, because if one is intoxicated by the modes of passion and ignorance, it is impossible uh, uh, for them to actually see what the truth is, you know, they're blind. So I just wanted to share that. Um, there's like, there's something called blind faith, but there's also something called blind doubt, you know, simply, you know, they, they will, you had mentioned that they're looking for proof, but as long as it doesn't threaten the foundation of their, uh, their, of the system, and then they will try to uh, fight it. Um, so just, it's impossible to see the truth without controlling the senses and the mind. And that's all I wanted to comment thank, on. Thank, thank you, you for sharing Srila Prabhupada's words. Again, I am only reiterating what I am reading from Srila Prabhupada. I have... Maharaj? Maharaj? Yeah, thanks for a very nice class. So many wonderful points that you made. Um, uh, however, you, you made a very important point in one of your previous classes, <clears throat> without which this class does not really have the significance or meaning that it can have. And that point that you made in the previous classes, in spite of talking about the way that we can understand these pastimes is through pure, through the pure loving devotional service to the Supreme Spiritual Master and through the Spiritual Master to Krishna. But then you also defined in the previous classes uh, what constitutes this pure devotion, uh, this sur surrender. In other words, what are the earmarks or what are the characteristics of surrender? If we don't know the characteristics, we may think or believe or imagine that we are surrendered just simply because we're doing the deed without doing it in this proper mood, this proper feeling, the proper understanding, then we may not achieve the goal that we want, such as you mentioned the six different aspects of surrender, which you may want to mention again to us. Yes. Um I, I know Maharaj. Don't want to, I can get, as you wish. I saw, I saw Archita Prabhu had his hand, Maharaj, so I was just trying to see what he had to say because of time. But I know exactly. Today I just emphasized on devotional aspect instead of the, uh, the exact processes of surrender, the six processes and, and all that. I was m more mentioning because Brahma Vimohan Lila, Srila Prabhupada, I saw was able to say a lot on a different angle so I was trying to present it from that angle today just because I know that the question of bewilderment is raised a lot and I wanted to uh, especially the Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4 chapter 30 text 20 if anyone reads that it actually Prabhupada elaborately elaborately explains the bewilderment process. Thank you for a very, very nice presentation, Prabhu. I just wanted to touch on that first question because it's very important. Um, some devotees take it then that if, if by serving, the knowledge will come, then they just serve, 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 and don't find time to hear and chant. And that's not good either because we've seen from practical experience that some devotees come in, they work very hard for a few months, a few years, and generally they develop this mentality that I'm working so hard, the other devotees are not working so hard, I'll go out and work for IBM and make money. You know, like that. So... It's not just about hard work. Prophet stressed that over and over again. We're not donkeys. We're not here to be donkeys, just to work hard. We're part of a preaching movement. And he said, if you don't hear and chant, meaning understand yourself and then preach, then 
instead of Shri Vigraha, the deity becomes Golagraha, becomes a burden on your neck. You just, it, it becomes, why is my Guru Maharaj making me get up and serve the deity every day and it's such a burden? That's the mentality that it sets in if you simply serve, 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 and don't hear and chant. So both have to be there. Don't think that just by serving somewhere magically it's going to come. Probably didn't want us to take that approach. You have to serve, but you also have to take the time to hear and repeat what you hear, and that will give you the enthusiasm to go on serving. Thank you, Prabhu. My, my, so the understanding is it has to be hand in hand. It has to collaborate. Am I correct, Prabhu? Uh, Last question, because... Well, this is just kind of a common statement. I can tell you previously, you know, from my own experience, you got to chant your rounds and reveal your mind to devotees. And if you don't reveal your mind to chant good rounds, you will fall down no matter how much service you have. And that I can tell you from example, from, you know, being a temple commander here before. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank Hare you. Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.